Yeah, I think Bitcoin's crossed the event horizon. It is universally acknowledged digital property. The use case for digital property is certainly a hundred trillion dollar type market. And if you want digital property, you want something with a protocol that is so stable that a hundred years from now, you don't expect any change. Even a thousand years from now, you don't expect to change. I surveyed my Twitter followers, and on average, they think Bitcoin will be around for 3,800 years. You want something which is a firm foundation that is not changing. And, uh, and Bitcoin is really perfect for what it is. I think with regard to market cap numbers, the issue with market caps is, is if I have a very thin float, if only 1% of the tokens trade, then I can calculate a market cap, but that's not the same as the effective liquidity. What you really have to do is look at liquidity. And uh, I, ultimately, I don't really think it makes sense to compare market caps to come to the conclusion. And even on a liquidity level, I don't think it matters that much. Like, for example, let's take Tether or uh, a stable coin. They trade massive amount every day. If you go and you look, like for sure, yeah, $40 absolutely. billion dollars a day. Okay, does that mean that Tether is going to replace Bitcoin? No. no. I, I, I think that the best way to think about this is there are different use cases. Do you have a digital exchange? Do you have digital art? Do you have a digital property? Bitcoin is digital property. It's not digital art. It's not a digital currency. A currency needs to be a medium of exchange you can transmit without a tax obligation in a compliant fashion. Otherwise, it's not a currency. A stable coin can be a currency, you know, if the regulators tolerate it, that's a currency. All, there's a, all these things have their own different market and they, they have their own regulatory dynamics and their own competitive dynamics. And, you know, Bitcoin's really competing against like kind proof of work networks that aspire to be digital property. Uh, you know, and you could probably say it's like the forks and you saw what happened with Bitcoin Cash or Bitcoin Satoshi Vision. And, you know, they will be whatever they will be. Uh, and I think that um, if what you want is something that will last hundreds of years, that's not going to change, then you, you want a Bitcoin because you value it. The fact that uh, anything else launches and has a large or small market cap or even a large or small liquidity, it's not going to change your desire. Ultimately, the, the fundamental point to be made with Bitcoin, especially as it pertains to micro strategy, is I look at it and I'm like, well, what would I trade it for that I want more? in 100 years. Like if your time horizon is 100 years, I, I wouldn't trade it for a stock in any company. I mean, you could give me Apple. I don't want Apple. I don't yeah. want Google, right? I don't want a building. I don't want a fleet of trucks. I don't want a bunch of diamonds. I don't want a stack of gold. I don't want currency, right? I, I don't, you know, you could show me, give me all the Picassos in the world. I don't want them. Like I like, I respect them, fine. <laughs> I, I'm not going to disrespect someone else that wants to hold Picassos. It's just yeah. not, you know, it's not what I want. What I want is a is a non-sovereign synthetic asset, which is a commodity that I can move anywhere in the world that is 121 millionth of all the energy in the network. It really is. It's competing with other bearer assets. It's competing with uh, with with bonds and monetary indexes and equity indexes. And uh, real estate held as a long-term investment, whereas the other cryptos, they're competing with platforms and exchanges and yeah. banks and, you know, and there are better ways to do things that are that have been done inefficiently. Right. And and uh, they all have a they've got a different vision, a different mission, a different set of competitors, a different set of risks. Right. We're not we're not venture capital as a micro strategy. I'm not a trader. I can't give you trading advice. Lord knows I bought Bitcoin <laughs> at all time highs and yeah. lost money. Well, like last week I bought it at 37,000 and it's up. But you know, like the day after I bought it, it might have been down. It's like that stuff it happens. happens. I'm just, I'm just a little engine that could. We're just going to keep dollar cost averaging as long as we can dollar cost average. I don't want to give anybody advice in an area. I'm not, a, I'm not an expert. I'm not a venture capitalist. I'm not a speculator. I'm not a trader. <laughs> Do you want to know one thing about crypto? I made over 3000% in profit in a few weeks. Fact is, the traditional financial system, the traditional money system makes you poor, not rich. 
If you want to earn 500,000, 1 million dollar, you have to wait until you're 50, 60, 70 in the traditional financial system and you probably will still be broke. And you will be old. This is not a sexy combination as you can imagine. But the question is, how can you start in crypto and make these profits? Where to invest? Where to start? My name is Gunnar and I'm from Germany as you can hear and things are a little bit different in Germany. More about that later on. The fact is, there are lots of different cryptocurrencies. It's a gigantic universe where beginners and professionals get easily lost. But there is light at the end of the tunnel. There are seven key steps you need to follow to become successful in this market. You have to know them and if you fail one of them, it's literally impossible to succeed in this market. Just an example, one of the key points is your exchange and one of the biggest are for example Binance and Coinbase. These are trusted and well established exchanges but, and this is a big but, you won't find the super profitable coins on those exchanges. The unknown super profitable coins that get gigantic profits are not traded on those kind of exchanges. They are traded on much smaller insider platforms that are barely known. And I can tell you what those super secret exchanges are and why they are so profitable. And another super important thing are the right information sources. The point is, the internet is gigantic. There are hundreds and hundreds of YouTube channels, blogs, pages and much much more. And there are also market makers and influencers. For example Elon Musk, he is not a crypto guy. But the moment he recommended Dogecoin. It went through the roof, to the moon so to say. But why did he recommend it? Where did he hear it from? He didn't hear it from newspapers. And believe me, he is listening to someone. But you have to know who and you have to react before he is reacting. This is really really important. And these are only two of the seven steps you have to follow in order to be successful in crypto. And if you want to know all of these steps in much more detail and if you want to have a comprehensive checklist, here's what you should do. There is a link below this video. Click on this link and you will get the opportunity to subscribe to my channel. Click on the link and you will see a video where I explain the next steps. So see you soon. Click on the link now. I'll see you there.